What do you do when you make a quilting mistake? Do you keep on pushing through, trying to find a solution so you can get it done? Or do you maybe set it aside, hoping for more perfect results the next time? Well, I am definitely a get-it-done kind of girl. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. And while I had the best of intentions on making this particular quilt, there were some challenges, and I'm going to share it with you. So come along. I've got a free pattern you can download online. It's from the Fat Quarter Shop. It's a wonderful new pattern that they've just put out, and I'm going to show you how to make it my way. But I got through it, and I love the results. So let's get to quilting. And don't forget, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thanks! I have a new Fat Quarter bundle that I'm really anxious to make a quilt with. I'm going to start with a baby quilt because that'll still give me a lot of fabric for other projects. Um, this in particular is by Free Spirit and it is the Enchanted Fat Quarter bundle. And there's just wonderful colors and prints and graphics and text and I really like how it all works together and and just the colors are fabulous and this with all these colors in one quilt will be gorgeous so I'm excited to get this going. What I also liked about this is there's one low volume in here and this is going to work perfectly for the background and what I'm going to show you is a quilt pattern it's a new free quilt pattern from the Fat Quarter Shop. I'll put that link down below. It's called the Jelly Roll Sizzle. And while this initially the, the pattern is set up for jelly rolls, we can also do it out of Fat Quarters. We can also do it out of scrap fabrics. And that's what I want to show you. So when you see a pattern, take a look. If you don't necessarily have the fabric, required for that pattern cut into that pre-cut you can probably come up with something on your own with what you already have and that's where i'm heading i have this fat quarter bundle i'm going to cut these into strips i'm going to cut that into my background blocks and we're going to make a quilt given my fat quarters a quick press just to get the heavy wrinkles out and I'm going to cut them down into the strips that we need for this quilt. I like using fat quarters because I can make pre-cuts of a size for a specific quilt, such as this. We need the two and a half inch squares, but then I'll also have some extra fabric to use as either charms, layer cakes, whatever the case may be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I layered them together, and, and you can layer whatever you're comfortable with, as far as the um, size goes. Now, these are really cut pretty darn wonky. And so I need to square them up. I'm not sure what happened, but when you buy fat quarters, um, any pre-cut that have been folded, they can skew the fabric, they can stretch the fabric, and sometimes they may just have been cut incorrectly. I squared up all these corners in one one spot. That way I know I can work from that point and have enough fabric. And I'll look on the bottom and say, okay, all these are at least as long as the top, so I'm not going to come up with anything that's too short. Now for this, what we need are four strips that are 12 and a half inches by two and a half. So four strips times two and a half is 10 inches. And I am going to cut a 10 inch strip off of this. So this is already lined up nice and straight and I'm going to cut through them all at one time. Immediately, I have this much fabric left over. So I have more than half of each of my fat quarters, which is great. So there's a lot that I can do. I can cut charms, I can cut longer two and a half inch strips if that's what I want. I can even get layer cakes. So for me this works really well. And I'm going to set that aside. Now I'm going to work on these side edges because they are pretty wonky themselves. Now this side I didn't worry about. Remember this is the first corner I started from so everything is most lined up in that point. And so when I cut these off I now have a nice corner here and I need them to be 12 and 12 and a half inches long. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. 
and we're going to cut that right here. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, because I have this little piece here, I'm going to immediately cut these into charm squares because this is a 10 inch piece. I can cut it in half to five inches. With this evened up to five inches, all I'm going to do now is cross cut it to five inches and I have some charm squares. So in addition to that larger piece of fabric from the fat quarter, we're also going to get some extra charm squares and I'll just set that aside for another quilt. So now this piece measures 10 by 12 and a half. I've got a few scraps. Most of these are not going to be useful. I might be able to use this one. But what I'm going to do now is cut this into two and a half inch strips. Will give me my four strips per fat quarter that measure two and a half by 12 and a half. And that's the extent of the cutting. It goes quite quickly and it's very easy. So if you have fat quarters or you have extra scraps in varying sizes, just cut your strips for this um, and you can get a quilt going together pretty quickly. So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to piece these. With all our strips cut, we have four from each of our 14 fabrics, which is 56 strips. We only need, I think we only need 54, so we're going to have a couple extra. So you can either pull two aside now or go ahead and sew it, and then whatever you don't use, put in the scrap pile. And what I want to make sure I do when I'm pairing these is I don't want to put all the same ones together. And I like the idea of some light pairs, some lark, uh, excuse me, some dark pairs, and some with light and dark. So get all your pairs sewn together. You're going to use a quarter inch seam. You'll actually have better luck if you take a scant quarter inch seam. And I'm going to show you why after these are pressed. But it really will make this go together a lot easier because then you're going to have nice sized blocks that sew together well. So a scant seam means just a little bit smaller, just a couple threads. That's all it's going to take. And then we're going to get some perfect squares to sew together. So let's get started. Let's get these pairs sewn together. With all our pairs sewn together, the strips are sewn in pairs of two and pressed to one side. Anything goes, whatever you like. I just tried not to duplicate two fabrics together. Now, the next step, we need our four and a half inch squares from the background. So we're going to set this aside. And I want to show you how to get this out of a fat quarter. We're going to use every bit of this fat quarter in order to get these four and a half inch squares. And that's part of the reason why I chose this size quilt, because I can use one fat quarter for the background. So again, I line up my corner. This side is actually really good and it's right on. Well, there is a little bulge there, so I'll cut a little bit. And I'm just going to start by cutting four and a half in one direction. And it's one, two, three, four. And it's just a matter of your preference, which way you like to cut first. There's no right or wrong. And so make sure it's four and a half now because we want to measure twice and cut once so we don't have any errors. So there's my half. Two, three, four is right here. Line that up on that side. So I am also going to cut this end piece. It's not the full four and a half, but we're going to need this to make up the extra blocks for our quilt. So let's see, I want to make sure I'm not going to cut anything short. So I'm going to cut right here to even this top edge up. And then we're going to come down four and a half, one, two, three, four and a half here and here. And do it again. And this is the same way I cut my charm squares. Of course, only they're in five inches, but uh, it works out really well. And as you're cutting, make sure you've got that extra four and a half on the bottom. And that's your confirmation that you did it correctly. Making it nice and even just makes your sewing so much quicker. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to have 16, I missed the thread, we're going to have 16 squares, and then we need to make two more out of what we have left over. Now, I don't know if you've done this before, but I have been known to put my scraps together to make the block that I need. Remember, quilts are about putting pieces together in order to create a bigger piece, and that's essentially what we're going to do. These already measure four and a half inches this way. Now what I need to do is get them to measure four and a half the other way. And we're not going to be able to match the pattern up, but that's okay because we're only going to have a little corner of it. This sort of almost does something, but I'm not worried about that. What I'm going to do right now is sew these and do my, my quarter inch down each side, press it, and then we'll cut out our last two blocks. All right, after taking these two extra pieces on the end of our fat quarter, sewing them together, pressing them to one side, I now have a four and a half inch strip by however long this is. And it's longer than I need, but notice I put the selvages to the outside so that I'm sewing the, um, the regular woven. And because the selvage is woven so tightly, if you use that in your quilt, it's it's going to it's going to be heavier but it's also going to pull the fabric more to one side now what i'm going to do here is cut the selvage off night whoops i'm not going to do that with a pencil am i here and i'm going to cut this to four and a half inches now i'm not going to cut with the seam down the center two three four and a half and the reason is anything in the middle gets seen more. And so even on my quilt bags, when I piece something, I always piece it off center or asymmetrical. Now, I've got a great extra piece right here, and I think that's going to measure two and a half inches. So while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that for my scrap pile because two and a half inches is something I can use a lot. So here we go. Just do that real quick and line it up so it's straight. And we're going to cut it at four and a half inches. One, two, three, four and a half. And there we are. Now, this gives us our 18 pieces because we need to make 18 strip sets with this background on it. And let's go ahead and do that next. The first thing we need, we have our, our blocks here, is we want to get our strip set. We will have a total, well we, had, we started out with 56, so we're going to have a total of 28 pairs. And remember, we have one extra. So what I did is we're going to have nine blocks. So I first pulled aside nine blocks that have the darkest fabrics. I like to kind of put my quilts, quilt blocks in a bit of a balance. I don't want all navy blue blocks or navy blue strips in one block. I'd rather have it spaced out across the quilt. So here are nine of my darkest, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have these nine. Then I pulled nine of the lightest. These are all mostly white backgrounds and light fabrics. And so I'm going to set that over here, and then I should have nine of the remaining combination of all the above. Now, they're actually going to be ten because we have one extra pair that we can decide where to use it or not. We will not use all of them. One will be set aside, but I kind of like to wait to the end to make that decision just to see what's going to work. What we need to do first is confirm that our block is four and a half inches wide. If you take a scant seam, this will be four and a half inches. If you take a full quarter inch seam, you're going to come up just a little short. The reason for that is look when you fold your seam. Oh, that one I had a wide end. When you fold your seam over, you can see how the fabric that folds over has a bit of height to it. There's like one or two threads there that are up and over 
And while that's not a lot, it is going to affect your seam allowance. So if you use a scant seam, your blocks will finish at 12 and a half inches. Once you've got these sewn together, if you use a larger seam, you're going to end up trimming your blocks down in order for them to be square, depending on what your final dimension is. So that's one thing to keep in mind is your seam allowance does matter in the end when you're making squares that need to line up into rows. So I'm good here. I've got my four and a half by 12 and a half. And the next step is to add our block. We're going to sew it directly to the strip set. This is four and a half inches square, so it should fit all the way around. And we're going to sew diagonally from this outer corner to the corner that will be in the middle. And if you go this way, you can't go wrong. It's just going to be a matter of your block turning around one way or the other. But in order to get that seam in just the right place, we want to draw a line diagonally. We're going to place this on our block and we're going to sew along this line. Then we're going to take a quarter inch and we're going to trim it. But that leaves a good chunk of fabric right there in a triangle. Now, I don't like having triangles in my scrap bag because with this bias cut, it can tend to stretch. And when I want to use fabric, if I have to match up triangles and find out which one fits with, fits with which, I'm going to end up just cutting a square out of it because that's a lot of fussy sorting through. So what I do instead is I will sew a second line. And what I'll do is put pins in if you're more comfortable with that. I'm going to sew this initial line, which is going to create my block. And this is what makes our, our, our little fan blade in the uh, quilt block that we're going to finish with. And then I'm going to come back and sew this second line. And this creates a smaller triangle on this side. So once I cut down the center, which is a quarter inch on each side, because I measured half an inch, I get this extra half square triangle that's all finished and ready to go, either to be sewn into a scrap quilt, put into the back of this quilt, or make a border, whatever the case may be. But what's fun is that it's light and dark, so you can actually make a fun um, half square triangle design out of that. And if you want to see some half square triangle options and different layouts, check the link that I'm including. There's some fun ideas there. So here's where we are. We're going to take a total of 18 strip sets and sew 18 of our blocks down each corner. And whether you do this as optional for me, it just works really well. What I do want to show you, though, when we are drawing the line on this pieced block, we want to make sure that actually it isn't going to matter. Let me just show you. We, we're going to draw the line down the center, and we want to make the second line on the seam side. Because when we make our seam here, notice that there's only going to be this little corner that shows up on our quilt. So that's fine. On the scrap piece, it's going to be different because this will be more towards the center and maybe more visible, maybe not. It's hard to say. I don't worry about that. But now I'm going to sew this way. So just make sure that that second seam, if you're going to sew it this way, is towards the outer, um, what do I want to say, the outer margin where that, that seam falls. And that way you get less seam here that's visible. So there we are. We have 18 blocks that we need to sew to 18 strips and then we're going to trim that. I'll show you how we do that. Press it, put things aside, and we're going to start assembling our blocks. This is going to get a really easy and these colors are gorgeous. They are going to look so pretty together. So let's go ahead and get some quilting done. All right, so the four and a half inch blocks have been sewn to our four and a half inch by 12 and a half inch strip sets. One thing I do want to show you 
is when you're catching this little corner, if you're sewing along and this wants to kick up on you and see how this got a little twisted, what I'll do is I'll take either the tip of my um, seam ripper or a stiletto or even just a needle and I'll just tuck that corner down so it won't flip back over and that helps eliminate that problem. The other thing is when I'm sewing this onto this strip set, I want to make sure these seams are facing down so as I sew that seam is already facing down and I don't have to worry about flipping seams. Those are two points that will make this a lot quicker. So now that this is done, and I don't usually use lines this dark, but I'm using them so they're more visible on the screen because sometimes it can be hard to see. And I did sew right on the line so I know it won't be seen from the top through the fabric. And because it's pencil, it'll wash out. So we're covered all the way around. Now we're going to take these bits and press them. I'm going to automatically, when I'm done, press them to the darker side. And there we go. Just give it a little tug. We don't want to pull too much because this is biased. And if we pull it, we're going to stretch and we're going to lose our, our square and it becomes almost oblongish and we don't want to do that. So set these aside. You're going to find lots of uses for that either within this quilt or in another. So that leaves us with this piece and we are going to press this over and we fold it towards the seam to the outside away from this seam. So it'll go towards the background because we don't want too much bulk in here. And then press these down and this is what we have. Now when I pieced my blocks together, I divided them up first. I took the strip sets and I divided them into three groups of nine because remember we had what I think we had 28 set one aside that left 27 and so three groups of nine. One group had the darkest with the blues with the darker fabrics. The other had blues with other colors so that's going to put my darker colors to the outside so they're not all heavily weighted on one side of the block and it'll kind of um, keep things balanced. And then I took another nine that were more the lighter colors with the white backgrounds and that'll just go in the middle. The big thing about that is because we're making this half square triangle on the end, we're doing that triangle, I just felt that I'm going to get more of a contrast making this more visible against dark fabrics than against the lights. And that was the only reason I did that. So whether you take that step or not is entirely up to you. That's, that's just kind of the things I think about as I'm sewing because when a pattern like this is becomes your secondary pattern, the more contrast you have against it, the more it's going to stand out and it just makes more interest in your quilt. So now what we're going to do is start piecing this together and we're going to use two strips. Let's see, let's get some different fabrics here. Two of these strips and we're going to use one of these. Strings everywhere. So the first piece lays like this the second strip goes like this. So our first step in sewing is to put nine strips with the angled fabric to nine strips that have not been altered. Then once we have that together, we're going to add this in, but we're going to turn it around so it goes this way. Now this is what our finished block will look like. And once these are pieced in a rotating fashion, we're going to create a secondary pattern here that is going to be a, uh, a windmill. So let me show you how that's going to work. Those of you who have worked with half square triangles before probably realized as I was piecing this together, this is not going to result in a windmill. And what I realized after making these blocks is I put these corners in in the wrong direction. Now there's a couple things you can do and for me it's about I want to push through, I want to finish the quilt. 
I could not take these pieces out because they needed to go this way. And since the fabric had been sewn and cut, I couldn't change that angle. But what I could do is change it on the opposite side. So these that are in the wrong place now create a white block where these come together. And where these would have just come together in a square like this, then I put in the windmill or the, yeah, I guess it's windmills, the name. And I used some of the um, fabrics that would contrast in each corner. Now, there's not really a lot of contrast to make these stand out. But what I can do when I'm quilting is I can add some extra heavier thread around this edge. And that's going to create a... Um, a greater contrast so these will stand out and then what I'll probably do with these blocks is use like a variegated thread and do some kind of quilting in the middle so I guess what I'm, I want to say here is this is a great quilt pattern even though I made it wrong and I didn't quite get the end results I was supposed to I'm very happy with it if you follow the directions better than I did and get this corner going this way, then you're going to get your windmills. And because I took the corner in the wrong direction, it came out as a square. And like I said, that's an opportunity to do, for, to do some quilting. So I want you to see this finished, what it looks like. And I want to encourage you when you're quilting and you make a mistake and it's not resulting the way it should be, it's okay. You can work around, come up with another idea, you know, fudge something else that'll work in there, and that's going to be all right. What I am going to do, this is a nine inch, or excuse me, a nine patch block, and it measures about 36 inches. And that'll make a good baby quilt. The other thing to think about, I don't know if you've ever done this, but a 36 inch square quilt is also great for anybody who is in a wheelchair. I've made a couple of these and put pockets across the back underneath and given it um, as a gift for someone in a wheelchair. And it just makes a really nice lap quilt that also has pockets underneath. The 36 inches keeps this from getting caught in the wheels or dragging on the ground. It's less apt to fall. Um, I do have a pattern, and we'll have to get into that one day. And maybe this uh, faux pas is what will encourage me to get into that one next. But I do want you to see this quilt. I want you to know it's a great and wonderful pattern. There's nothing wrong with the pattern. I just didn't follow the directions correctly. So I encourage you to give this a try. If you like this kind of a layout, it's easy to make with the strips. You could include lots of different fabrics. And I'm excited to get this finished. I think I am going to make, as I said, this is a nine patch. I'm going to make seven more blocks so I can make it a 16 patch. And four blocks by four blocks, it'll make it a little bit bigger, about 48 inches square. And I have enough fabric left over in my fat quarters. Plus, the other thing is I also have some extra charm squares. And I have a selection of half square triangles. I can come up with something to do with these. And so I, I have a, a good collection of bits of fabric from, from this uh, fat quarter bundle. And I'm really happy with how this turned out, despite... <laughs> Despite the fact that it's not exactly what was intended, um, it is pretty. I like I like the uh, colors working together, and I'm kind of happy with those white blocks. That's going to make uh, make quilting this fun. So once I get that finished, I'll show you how that looks. So thanks for bearing with me, and thank you for just being there and watching and letting me know that I'm accountable to somebody. And yes, if we make a mistake, we push through and we finish the quilt. It's about having a finished quilt, not a perfect quilt. 
So have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure to share my quilting with you.